Hey everybody, how's it going? Um, in today's video, we are going to make a graphene copper interface where the copper interface is, uh, the copper graphene interface is with the 111 surface of copper. I also would like to remind everybody that my microphone is currently broken, so I have to speak into my laptop, and therefore uh, you might hear my laptop fan and I apologize if it's bothersome, but it's the best I can do right now. So if we're going to make an interface between graphene and the copper 111 surface, we first have to cut the 111 surface of copper. And so we'll do this by opening a unit cell of copper, which I've obtained just from the online. And as you can tell on this unit cell, the 111 surface is an internal plane. It cuts through like this. Um, like for example, this is the uh, this here would be the 001 plane, for example. Actually, in a previous video for a gold unit cell, I did the exact same thing I'm going to do here, and I arrive at some transformation matrix later. Basically, you can use that same transformation matrix on this system, and you will get uh, the 111 surface exposed. Uh, but for those who haven't watched that video, I'll, 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 I'll redo the process now. So the first thing we do is we go to boundary. And we're going to expand our unit cell 4x4x4. Uh, four four four. Now this actually doesn't expand the unit cell vectors themselves. You can notice they're so small. Um, so if I were to save this as a VASP now, the unit cells as a VASP file, the unit cell parameters in that file would be the original unit cell still. Uh, same thing with the atomic coordinates. So this is just for show now. The, the actual unit cell has not changed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the 111 surface. So I have to go to Edit, Lattice Planes, New, and I have to make the 111 surface. So you can see it's this plane here. So now I'm going to orient this plane to be horizontal or perpendicular to the screen. And I have to find the next periodic image for this plane. And you can see quite readily that it's this sort of distance here that these atoms align. I'll go to new. So this is five, six, seven, eight. So it's three away. So I'll, I'll go eight. There it is. So this is basically like one axis of our new unit cell. And I have to find the next set of atoms that are periodic in a different dimension. So you can see that, uh, well first let, let's, let's define a, a, a plane that is perpendicular to the 111 plane, which is which would be the 1, 0, minus 1 plane. Maybe let's make this 0. Okay. So there it is right there. You can see we have two orthogonal planes. And in this axis, the next uh, repeating atom is just, looks like just one away or two away. So let's go new two. Oh, that's too much. One. So there it is right there. So now what we have to do is we should define a third dimension, but we actually don't have to. I find it harder to visualize at that point. So right now I'm just going to cut outside of our planes. So this anything from this orange up, from this orange down, from this plane to the left, and from this green to the right. Okay. So now we have what looks like a new unit cell forming. We turn it this way and you can see that while I could have drawn lattice planes this way, it's easier to just sort of visualize like this. So you can see our unit cell here. So I'll then cut outside of that. Okay, so there you have it. There's our new unit cell. And um, now what we have to do is we have to figure out the new coordinates of this unit cell, make a transformation matrix, and apply it to the original unit cell that we started with. So we first define the origin of our new unit cell, and that's going to be the points 1.5 to 1.5. And then define our new axis. So this is the A axis, B axis, uh, and 
this is the c-axis so I don't know why this isn't letting me see more in here but basically we can see our our uh, pattern here or our vectors that we need to use so now we need to um, make a file where we can compute the differences in these values so um, I typically just open up some text file which I have here transformation matrix text and then we can just do some simple subtraction so our origin is 1.5 to 1.5 so 1.5 to 1.5 I'll actually make them vertical like this it's a little easier to see so this is our origin the next one is our A which is 221 that's this one 2221 That's our A. Next one is our B, which is 212. Okay, that's our B. And then the next one is our C, which is straight up, actually 2.532.5. Okay, so now we need to find out the relative unit cell vectors. So we're going to make our transformation matrix now in C prime. Okay, so now all we do is we subtract um, the origin, we, we subtract from the origin each of these unit cell vectors. So our A will be um, minus 0 0.5 0, 0.0 and 0 0.5 Oops. our B will be minus 0 0.5 1.0 minus 0 0.5 our C will be it looks like just minus 1 for everyone Okay, and there is our transformation matrix. So we have, we now go back. We are going to reopen the original copper unit cell. Okay, remember this. Now we go to edit, edit data, unit cell, transform. And now we type in the transformation matrix. So we have minus ones on this side. Right? We have minus 0 0.5, 1, minus 0 0.5. Okay. And minus 0 0.5, 0, 0 0.5. So now we select OK. Yes. Yes. Apply. There we go. So now we have our new unit cell. As you can see, there it is. So now we are going to save this, file, export data. And we are going to just call it the 111 unit cell. So save, Cartesian coordinates. Okay, so now we have cut our 111 unit cell and now we need to interface it with graphing. Now here I have a graphite unit cell. And as you can see, graphite is not graphene. Graphene is simply one layer of graphite. So to make the graph graphene unit cell, I actually simply need to just uh, delete some atoms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete these top two layers. And then I have to actually delete the atoms on the outside of the unit cell. Okay, and then what I have to do is I have to delete the atoms that are repeating. Um, so I have to delete these two. 
Okay, so there's our graphene unit cell. So what I do is I go to File, Export Data, and I, I'm going to go Graph Graphene, and I'm actually going to save it as an XYZ. Save. No. So now what I do is I make a new file. I call it graphene.vasp and I go into the um, graphite.vasp I get the unit cell vectors go into graphene.vasp paste them okay go into the graphene XYZ get these atoms go back to the graphene.vasp change the atom count to 4 Type in the units. Okay, and this should be it now. So I'm going to save this. Open it. Graphene.vasp. And there you go. There is my graphene unit cell. You can see that all of these atoms are the same. Um, so now we have our graphene unit cell here. Okay, and we have our um, copper 111 surface. So the question is, how are we going to interface these two surfaces? Um, and that is going to be the subject of the next video. So uh, there are two ways you can do it. Well, there's many ways you can do it, but there's two realistic ways. Um, so see if you can do it and let me know. Um, in any case, um, in a little bit, I will post a new video where I do both both ways, uh, both both styles, so to speak. So thank you for watching uh, and stay tuned.